How much terrorism is enough? Benny Gantz tells Saudi Arabia that there is room for a Palestinian capital in Jerusalem. Farmers in Judea and Samaria face vandalism on a regular basis. Stay tuned for more right here on the Joshua and Caleb Report. In a world plagued with anti-Israel propaganda, Hayovel presents the Joshua and Caleb Report, a positive voice of truth straight from Israel's heartland. In a world of negativity and fake news, every Christian should be connected to the life and positivity that Israel brings to the world. I'm Luke Hilton here with Joshua Waller on the Mount of Blessing, deep in the biblical heartland of Israel. Glad to be coming to you this week. Got lots to get to this week. Um, I felt like maybe we should just clarify this week, Josh, that, uh, um, or maybe I shouldn't tell you, uh, well, did you know that the show is not named after you? Uh, yes. that, would that be a blow, like a disappointment? Because yeah. are you saying we're getting a lot of comments? Well, because I know it's not named after me. Like I thought that was pretty clear. You mean the Joshua and Luke report? That we yeah, did? Joshua and Caleb report. Okay, so just it's to not set the named clear. Uh, though after you, no, or even your twin brother Caleb, who used to be a part of the show, and actually right. could be credited with coming up with the whole idea of Joshua and yeah, Caleb way back great. in the day. The idea is, is that there was two valiant fighters back in the yeah. day named Joshua and Caleb that stood up for the values that Luke and I hope to stand for every day and that we hope to give to all of you, our listeners. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear a Joshua and Caleb report today. That is for sure. And that's why we try to take even negativity or potential negativity and turn it into positivity, which is exactly what we're going to do today because we're going to talk about vandalism and terrorism, but we're going to bring the the stories of life and positivity to you. And that's why we always talk about that in the beginning of the show, because we want to be like the two spies who stood up to the Joshua and Caleb, who stood up to the 10 spies and the rest of the, the uh, children of Israel in the wilderness and said, no, we believe in God. We believe in the promises that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yes, we can do it. There's positivity to be found here. So that's right. Luke. Anyways, if you're not a YouTube subscriber, make sure you click down below and uh, hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we have a new show, which comes out every Tuesday. Um, and you can leave us a comment. Lots of people like to leave comments on our uh, videos. We love to interact with you there. If you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you go ahead and subscribe or follow. It's free everywhere. Um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everywhere you can find podcasts pretty much. Um, go ahead and, and subscribe there. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating. Only five stars, though, nothing less. We would uh, definitely appreciate it. If you want to leave something less, then just uh, send me an email. email. Yeah, <laughs> It's Luke at Hyde. Hayovel.com, H-A-Y-O-V-E-L.com. Okay, before we dive in, I have to talk about warning, fundraising. Okay, so you can um, skip ahead if you want. Uh, 60 seconds. <laughs> end of your fundraising campaign, but we're coming down to the wire. We only have nine days left in our fundraising campaign, I think. Say 21st? That's yep. Right. Um, but basically... Uh, this is our big fundraising push for the for the year. You can go to serveisrael.com and click on the banner at the top of the page or click on the link in the description below. It says Cause Match. Um, we're raising $232,000, half of which is already raised, which means every dollar you give is doubled for twice the impact. Josh, some things that we're raising money for, a nine-passenger van. This is yep. a first for Hyvel, and we're super excited about it because we always rent vehicles, and we've probably spent millions of dollars of rental vehicles After in the past 16 years yeah um pruners we're really hoping if we if fundraising goes well we might be able to get some electric pruners this year which means that hopefully uh you won't have arthritis in another 30 years right. um and also be able to get a whole lot more work done so that's, that's a big thing Super and also more that. attachments for our skid steer and mini excavator like an auger to dig holes so if you're one of those volunteers that dug 2,279 holes <laughs> uh this could really help with that uh fence post driver i just pulled these off the sheet and yep. probably even lots more right tons more which equipment. would really help us with our work with the farmers so which is actually running right now the equipment is out putting yeah, it in a new as road speak. as we speak as which we is speak. amazing yeah uh, and we got just lined up i mean we could keep them going day and night if we could really That's right um and you've probably seen the video we're going to play it here in a minute about our dogs and trees being stolen and uprooted this is a good way to help support that work of restoring the trees um, and just keep restoring the land and if you're a faithful listener of the joshua and caleb report and of our youtube channel this is also a great way to be a joshua and caleb voice in your generation so again 
click the link down below. It's the cause match campaign link, or just go to servisrael.com. Click on the banner at the top of the page. It's our end of year fundraising campaign. We only have nine days to go before the deadline. We have to hit our goal. So help us out there. Be a part of the team. Be a part of the cause. Um, Josh, we had some dogs stolen this past week and trees uprooted and also stolen and so far still have not gotten them back. Uh, major, major issue. First time that High Vale has actually had such a mm-hmm. uh, problem. Right. Uh, major, major encroachment on our uh, investment here in the land. We're like we've we've put in vineyards, we've planted vineyards, uh, we've done lots and lots and lots of work here right. in the land. But this is the first time we've actually had uh, our forestry project uh, invaded upon and taken right. taken advantage of it, ripped out, and uh, so we, we're reeling over that. Um, Maybe we should show the film, the quick quick yeah. film on that. And, yeah, then we and can get, get into the details. details. And unfortunately, um, we're going to talk about this in a minute. You called other farmers in the area, and unfortunately, one of the farmers said, "Welcome to the club." Welcome so, to the club. That this is a not an isolated that incident. happens. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we're going to play the video, and uh, then we'll um, talk about how this impacts other people in the area as well. So this, this project is a uh, joint project with Norway, Vision Norway, uh, we're planting these trees. We had about 100 volunteers here this fall uh, planting this, these trees, these 2,000 trees as a beginning uh, test pilot and to see uh, the prophecies, to see, these, to see the words of, of God come to life again, to see the, the land revived, planting native trees. These are all native. Uh, we're here 2,000 years ago. So Mac and I um, were in charge of coming out and feeding the dogs out here in the forest every day. And um, Wednesday morning when we came out, we noticed a bunch of the trees were uh, knocked out. Uh, when I first saw that, I, I was driving, so I started driving a little faster. <laughs> Flew up to the spot where we usually parked and uh, jumped out, and the dogs weren't barking or anything. So as soon as we saw him not there, we both took off up there because we both were pretty attached to them, I guess. I mean, at least I was. Uh, Both of them were gone and the cage was all um, warped out of shape. We're guessing what happened was is they came in, ripped out about 250 trees, and then went up and stole our dogs. Um, I was really mad when I first saw they were gone because I really liked the dogs and uh, I guess we kind (laughs) of got along pretty good. Been working here in this area of Judea and Samaria for the last 16 years and this project that we're that we're working on now with this forestry project is probably one of the most exciting projects that I've ever been involved with. Um, we just a few months ago we started here with about 100 volunteers uh, planting. We planted 2,000 trees. We got another 2,000 to plant. Um, just a few days ago we had a, a major uh, uh, problem, and that is uh, a problem that farmers all over this region. Uh, have experienced. Uh, Local Arabs uh, come and vandalize farms here all the time. Uh, It's a massive problem and there's no um, there's no uh, force to stop it. Um, So we're just another example of that now. It's our heart to see this land greened again. It's a biblical prophecy. Everybody that believes in the Bible knows that this is something that must happen. This land uh, that was once desolate is becoming like the Garden of Eden. That's quoting Isaiah. And we want to give you guys an opportunity to participate with us on the ground, feet on the ground here, in reversing this wrong. We're going to replant. Lord willing, we'll get the dogs back somehow. Uh, This is all going to cost us around $16,000 just to replace what's been destroyed. Uh, So I ask you guys to join us. Join us. We have an end of the year fundraiser going on right now that you can join uh, with us. We're here to stand with Israel. We're going to keep standing with Israel. And Lord willing, we'll be successful. 
Okay, guys, so thanks for watching that. This is something uh, incredibly close to our hearts. We're going to mm -hmm. keep moving on. We're going to keep, we're going to replant, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and thank you also for joining us. Luke talked about the fundraiser, jumping on board with us with that. Uh, I, I want to make a quick comment about the, uh, the actual trees because um, you're going to talk about other farmers that have been vandalized, you know, over the years in a minute. But um, something interesting is that we didn't plant these trees with the goal of a return on investment in mind. Like, okay, several mm -hmm. years down the road, we're going to get fruit, we're going to have a crop, we're going to have produce. The only, like, the only goal and reason for planting these trees was to restore the land. Right. And, uh, you know, you're talking about 20, 30 years because we want to have a forest here. The Bible talks about the forest of Ephraim. Um, and uh, Nate and you and, and the High Velt, um, team has done tons of research about restoring the land, bringing back the soil and the waterways and the trees and the forests and, and the, basically the life of the land. And that was the goal of this. So what threat was that to the local Arabs? Nothing really, no except that all, yeah. they don't love the land. And so I think that's important to uh, point out is that there's, it's a difference between what it comes down to here in Israel, the difference between people that love the land and people that don't love the land. Right. And the encroachment on on the fact that here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to see the land absolutely come back to life. Right. We're saying that, that thank God there's still 2,000 trees yeah. in the ground right now. And we're oh, going to yeah. keep planting. We're going to another 2,000 to plant. But yeah, that's, but just knowing that there's nothing in this for us. It's literally, right. you know, our love of the Bible and the, the, wanting the prophecies to come back to life and just see the land flourish, to see those thorn bushes disappear yeah. and to see life coming back again. Yeah. That that was the mission and the vision. And the, the, you know, 70 volunteers that dug all these holes and planted these vines just a couple of months ago, that was their heart as well. I think it's a clear example of what's happening. We have the Jewish people returning to the land, the land being revived, restored, and they're working just uh, incessantly to see this vision come to life. And then we mm -hmm. have the local Arabs who really do not represent that love of the land right. and the care of the land. They represent the desolation of the land and the destruction of the land. Uh, and that's what we're facing right now. When I talked to Luke this, um, this morning, I thought, you know what, I need to just get... Because as soon as this happened, I realized, I was like, you know what, I've heard this before. Right. We have just become uh, partakers of the same old thing that all the farmers that we help on a constant mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Uh, so right. I began to call farmers that we have been in contact with over the years. I, I called uh, Michael Loria down in Judea. I said, Michael, and he, as soon as I called him this morning, he was like, hey, sorry to hear about the trees yeah, and all this. And it. I said, what about you? Right. So what have you experienced? And when he put, first put his farm in, he planted 500 trees, 500 olive mm -hmm. trees. And guess what? He lost all 500, 500 olive trees. This is Michael Lorraine, right. yeah. It's um, a huge investment. Huge investment of the trees and the time and all mm -hmm. this stuff. And so he, the, all these trees were uprooted. And then, so he replants, obviously. You know, there's oh, one yeah. thing solid about the Jewish the people. Jewish people, they always replant. They're not going to stop. They're going to keep no. going, keep going, keep going. Then he said, hey, you know what? I'm going to put a fence around it. I'm going to put a fence around it, help protect it, help to keep the, uh, the sheep herds from grazing down my olives, the young olive plants and all right. this, right? So he puts his fence around it. He puts three or 400 fence posts in and puts the wire around. And guess what? Which is a crazy amount of work. Oh, and it's a lot of money. Like, yeah. A lot of money. So this is, the, uh, when I tell this story, don't think just one farmer. Think about every, mm -hmm. like this is the basic, and I'm going to give you a few examples here, but this is the basic startup. This is the farmer startup style that happens almost every time a farmer right. starts here. Guess what happens to his three or 400 fence posts? ripped out, stolen. Okay, he puts it back. And guess what he does? Three or four hundred fence posts, three yeah. or four times until that fence actually still stay, stands that's there crazy. today. That's crazy. Um, that's a huge investment. It's called and, dedication, and, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, not turning back. They're just mm -hmm. going to keep going. Two kilometers of his, two kilometers of his, his uh, wire mesh fence whoosh, ripped out. Put, you know, all of this work is put is uh, is going back in. Then, uh, the the Arab local Arab mm -hmm. shepherds find that he has water to his grove. So what do right. they do? They sneak in and they undo the water tap at the end of his olive grove there, where he can't see it, and they water right. their flocks daily out of his water pipe that he's paying for. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff, like it just keeps going on and on and on. He, his electricity lines. He ran electricity lines. Right. They stole the electricity electricity lines like multiple times and then finally mm -hmm. he's like how do i keep my electricity lines from getting stolen finally he has to put his electricity lines and get huge boulders and puts these big rocks on those electricity lines uh through this through the area so that he can actually mm -hmm. keep electricity there right all of this guys is a huge amount of work plants uh you know the time put into it uh hundreds of thousands of shekels okay this, years and years and years, years of investment um even before they were see seeing any return on their investment and here's the deal luke michael Luria is a successful farmer today. Yeah. That was his beginning. Yeah. Can we you help imagine? Him. How you volunteers go pick his olives, pick his olives you know, help year. him out every year. 
what a dedicated man. Like this mm-hmm. guy did not stop. He's actually the founder of the community there close by. The right. uh, uh, oh, yeah. name slips me. Panay Kedem, Panay, right? Panay Kedem. The, the, this is uh, close to uh, Hebron down in Judea. Right. Um, today, or just last week, and I want to tell you, that every single one of these guys I'm going to mention, they got a glory story. They persistently stayed focused on the goal of seeing the land of Israel restored, seeing communities built, uh, mm-hmm. seeing the, the fulfillment of the promise, that the, prophecy, the prophecies of the Bible come to pass. Like, that's their zeal. It's not about making money. I talked to Michael Lurie. He's like, you know, yeah. maybe this year, after 14 well, years thing. of working, maybe I'll see a, a, a return on this investment, yeah. you know? He got, this is the big news, Luke. Right. Last week, he won first place for his olive oil in an award here in Israel. Amazing. So... All but I guess that that's the thing is. I wanted to point out too is like, yeah, these farmers, it's a business. They have to make money. They got to support their families. But none of them are in it for the money because there is a thousand other vocations yeah. that would be a hundred times more profitable than far- not right. only farming. I mean, I think farmers anywhere in the world have probably the hardest so job. Low, low job um, yeah. But then you put that right in the middle of Judea and Samaria where you just, you know, all of your neighbors don't <laughs> love what you're doing and are against what you're doing. Um, and when the whole world it seems like they're against you so many times, I mean, these yeah. guys are totally dedicated. Yeah. You get and it's the love feet. of the land. Yep. For just for the love of the land. This is mm-hmm. what they're doing. Near Levi, right here in yeah. uh, the Mount of Blessing Samaria area. He planted 400 vines. We plant, you know, along with Near Levi, yeah. we were always helping him out. We planted these 400 vines. 400 vines were ripped out of the ground. What do you do? 400 vines were taken out of the ground and replanted in an Arab village <laughs> close by. Like, and they're still planted there. Like, yeah. this is a really, this is a big problem. And what does Near Levi do? He keeps planting. He yeah. replants the terraces that were stolen. We help him do that. We, right. we restore what was broken, and we keep doing it, and we keep doing it. This year, Nir Levi received 20 tons more fruit than he did last year. Like I'm saying, the blessing of God is with these Happening, guys. Yeah. It doesn't matter Finally, when they, But like, this is a long struggle for them, you know, 20, 30 years. It's absolutely not easy. Eris Ben Sidon, another farmer. Mm-hmm. He's planting vineyards in yeah. the whole area here, Shiloh to Harbracha here, the Mount of Blessing area. He's got uh, like close to 300 dunams of vineyards, like 75 acres of, mm-hmm. of uh, vineyards now. Which is a lot for this area a whole in lot Israel of in general. He spent seven years in court cases after a left-wing group came and basically right. sued him over a land area that he had that he eventually won in the end because it wasn't legit what they were saying. Right. They were saying he had it was probably, Arab land. He had already and, spent probably thousands of dollars clearing the land and getting it ready and then, you know, spent seven years. And, and a vineyard in general already takes four years before you get your first crop. So. Yeah. Luke, it cost these farmers, just to give everybody a, a basic idea, mm-hmm. it cost these farmers 5,000 shekels a day mm-hmm. to run an excavator. Which is to almost clear the $1,500, land. right? Yeah, to clear the land. So every day that they're clearing these terraces, near Levi, when he lost the 400 uh, vines out there, he spent nearly $20,000 clearing that area out. Mm-hmm. You know, you got at least two weeks of work into that. That's right. an insane amount of money. Air's been side down to clear out the area that he cleared out for his vineyards thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. And you're talking $1,500 a day yeah. just to run the uh, rental, the, the big, huge uh, bulldozers and equipment to clear the land. You're talking about serious investment. Um, Eris Ben Sidon had unbelievable attacks against him for yeah. years and years and years and years. Uh, protests from the Arab community, hundreds of Arabs coming up to his fields. like, And he held that off. And eventually he planted these fields and was successful. Today, I talked to Eris Ben Sidon. Guess where mm-hmm. he is? In Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. He's flying back from Dubai right now. Like well, and his in winery is one of the ones that made a deal to bring wine from Samaria to the UAE. Right. Which is just absolutely amazing. So um, here we go. We got a guy that's that, that like the beginnings were threatened yeah. and hard, and he spent years and years and years pushing, 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 boom, and he made it. And now he's flying back from Dubai today after yeah. signing a deal for his wine. And I think that's really the story that we're trying to tell is that no matter how much setback these farmers have and, and the amount of investment they make and the years and years and years and years that they put into the land, at the end of the day, yes, it's still hard. No, it's still – none of them would, would tell you that it's easy today, yeah, yeah. even after 25 years or whatever. Um, but, you know, the hand of God is in it. They're getting awards. Yeah. Every single one of these, uh, you know um, – Michael Laurie is uh, olive oils no, wins Wind number one. Yeah. Uh, Nier and Air is both. You know their winery. Awards. The wineries have international awards, gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals on all their wines. And so, yes, 
their work cannot be stopped. There's one more guy, one more farmer that I'm going to mention. It's actually a group yeah. of farmers that uh, that are they're represented within this story. But the mm-hmm. Itamar Farms are absolutely phenomenal. Just down the road here, Itamar Farms. The the Itamar farmer has experienced probably more hardship and trial mm-hmm. than anybody I've ever any of the farmers I've known. We've helped Itamar right. farmers for years. Uh, these guys are passionate and they're zealous for seeing the land restored. Um, the the one farmer I called, he, he's the one who told me, you know, welcome, welcome to, the, to club. the club. That's the saddest thing I mm-hmm. ever could hear. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Like that just uh, thievery and uh, destruction is just a part of the club. Comes with the territory, yeah. It's Ladies almost and gentlemen, like you have to plan for it. We need to, the wake up world. This is not acceptable. Yeah. That the Jewish people coming back to the land, that's a welcome to the club. And I guess you might be wondering, okay, what does this have to do with me or what can I do about it? Well, unfortunately, the uh, Israel's government and their military and their police, everything is influenced by International. other countries yeah. and the amount of pressure that they put on Israel. The United Nations, you know, resolution after resolution being passed against them. Other governments and prime ministers and presidents just pressuring them, give up land, you know, uh, stop building homes, stop settling, stop making yep. farms. That's the reason why there's so much trouble, because then Israel has a hard time having the boldness and confidence to say, no, we want to stop it, because it's constantly that balance of, yes, we want to stop vandalism and thievery, but we also want to, you know, uh, we, we want to keep our relationships with the international community and yep. make sure that they're happy too. So it's right. this constant balance, and that's where these farmers end up suffering. Right. But I'll tell you what, it's just like the book of Exodus when it talks about yeah. the more you uh, the more you pressure them, the more they uh, they grow, right? Yeah, it's unreal. The Itamar farmer, the most you know pressured and and pushed and shoved around. Guess what? It's the largest organic farm in the state of Israel. Is there? That's where if you want a healthy food, eighty five percent of the organic eggs that are feed the nation of Israel come from the Itamar farms that started out. Pushing, pushing, and thievery, and all the stories we've just said, you know, equipment stolen, uh, yeah. you know, everything they, like, every time they did something, boom, push back. And then they push, they do a little bit more. They plant again. They read it. Hundreds. It's more farmers. The the one guy, the same guy, the, the, the largest, uh, you know, the organic farm now in Israel. Yeah. Had three or four hundred of his whole herd of goats and sheep were taken, stolen, boom, gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are the kind of starts that they had. and But yet now, look. They're right. feeding the nation of Israel. 85% of the eggs come from this one farm. It's the largest organic farm in Israel. The, the goat milk and the ch- goat cheeses yeah. and all, the, all this incredible, like a huge percentage is feeding the nation now. Mm. That persistence paid off. And there's, there's something I want to bring out here. Yeah. It's uh, Genesis, Genesis tw- uh, 32, 28. And it says, you sh- your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Everybody mm-hmm. knows this story. Yeah. But it should be called Israel. And it defines it. And he says, For you have struggled with God and men and have prevailed. Right. This is what's going on. The, the world is at war with the nation of Israel. They're at war with this man that was named Jacob that's now, God said, gave him a blessing and said, you're right. going to settle this land. You're going to be at war with these, and you're going to win. Mm-hmm. You're going to prevail. So against all odds, this is the Jewish nation that stands here today. And we're going to talk about more details here in a minute about there's still hardships. Yeah. Israel's going through hardships, but yet they will prevail. And all these stories I've just told you, I don't know. Growing up in the farming in, in the Tennessee, I'd, yeah. go, I'd go do something else. Oh, yeah. If I had what these that guys setback, faced, yeah. that much setback, there is no way on God's green earth that I would just keep moving on and doing it. But yet they will prevail. Because God's Israel. word said it, and they're stand, that's what they're standing yeah. on, is God's word, the yeah. promises and the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So. They're going to prevail. They're going to be successful, and it's God's word on the So the, the end of the day is that they prevail, and I just think that's amazing. But for you as an American or a Westerner or whatever country you're listening in or living in, your job is to pray and support and do everything you can in your country to turn your nation's... Um, tide of anti-Israel rhetoric into pro-Israel rhetoric and the support and um, working with your government not to put those pressures on Israel, but to put pressure on Israel to thrive and survive and live and uh, and grow. You know, and I just want to say quickly, Luke, that's why when I was 14 years old, I looked at my dad and said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Uh Because I realized that Israel was a nation in need. Look at these farmers, all these stories I just told. This is not a new thing. Israel and the farmers of Israel need backup like no other farmer in the world. 
this story is not just a, you know, there's other farmers in need, obviously, but this story is a God story. Right. And it's about Israel prevailing over the enemies that, that are coming against. It's a God thing. And for us as the nations to come and be partner with Israel and to make this, to help make this a success story, mm-hmm. that's what we're all about here at High Uvel. This is what we dedicated our lives to, is standing behind the farmers of Israel, helping make them successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I pray to God that many of you that are listening now will partner with us in yeah. this work of seeing the land of Israel revived. If trees get ripped out, let's have that spirit of Israel. Yeah. That, that No longer Jacob, but Jacob has come to Israel, and now he's succeeding. He's wrestling with God and man, and he's prevailing. And we're gonna we're gonna yeah. stand with Israel in that way. We're gonna prevail, and we're gonna replant. We're gonna yeah. replant. We're gonna keep going. We're not stopping. We're right along Israel. We're shoulder to shoulder. We're gonna keep moving forward. And I think and that's I guess the that's power. the thing is uh, you know there's you may be looking at Israel, looking at the news, and, or you may be looking at the United States or whatever country yeah. you're living in. Um, you know we we had stuff on the show we could talk about today. Benny Gantz, one of the the yeah. leaders in Israel's government, defense minister and potential prime minister saying there's room for a Palestinian capital in Jerusalem, you know, alongside a Jewish capital. Let's have some international um, support you know, say no to that. Can we yeah. do that, guys? Can you just leave a comment on here and say, uh, no, there's not there room was, in Jerusalem for a Palestinian capital. We just need to right. make that loud from an international perspective. Yeah. Can we do and that you with? need to join that chorus. Is <laughs> you the thing. Too. There was two attacks, uh, terrorist attacks. We have to call them what they are. Um, this past week, there was a Palestinian just pretty close to where we are in Kidumim, um, on along the highway at a roundabout, there was a, a Palestinian vehicle stopped. Guy Arab got out of his vehicle, threw a Molotov cocktail at an IDF soldier, and unfortunately, the soldier didn't take action. And the reason, almost one hundred percent guaranteed, is that he's afraid because there's been so many rules and regulations put on him because Israel wants to look good in the international community, yeah. and that's. Totally the reason why. Israel, the, the, its army is afraid to defend themselves. Right. And horrifically, actually, a mother in the northern Samaria, even farther north of us, was uh, murdered um, just uh, today. This morning. Yeah, which is just, just horrendous, horrendous. And that was why you asked the question in the beginning of the show, how much terrorism is enough? Israel has had more than enough of their share of terrorism. How much And thievery. we're not saying, yeah. and I guess what we're saying is, you know, this show is about the Joshua and Caleb spies in our generation. That's what our mission is and vision is. And that's what we want you to be, to stand up wherever you are in the world, to be one of those spies. And we're not saying, you know, this is on you. This is, um, you know, this is any of our fault or, you know, this is, we're responsible. What we're saying is, let's take responsibility. Let's yeah. stand with the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's stand on the promises of God's word. Let's be the voice in our own community. Let's be the prayer group leaders. Let's be the financial investors. Let's go to our representatives. Let's go to the government and put positive good pressure. You know what? You know, whether you like it or not in America, your government, you know, our government, we're Americans, might very well be changing not so much for the good when it comes to Israel. But as individuals, it is our moral responsibility and Bible responsibility to continue standing on the Word of God and standing in support of Israel physically. Like, you actually have to take action. You have to do something. So that's our encouragement today. Let's be the voices of Joshua and Caleb yep. in our generation. And when a mother is murdered in Israel, yeah. let's that cannot just go under the rug. People no. have to stand up and say something. And so we're saying it today. Enough, enough is, is enough. enough. You can't pull out more trees yeah. in Israel. You can't take more vineyards. Enough mm-hmm. is enough. Israel has come back to the land of Israel. They're reestablishing. They're building up the land of Israel. This yeah. is, is it's prophecy being lived out right before right. our eyes. We're part of that. We're literally seeing it. We're touching it. We're a part of it. Mm-hmm. And we're asking you out there that are watching, join us. Join us, yeah. Join, join us. the team. Join the team. Uh, guys, you can... Join our end of your fundraising campaign, link down below or at serveisrael.com. Reach out to us at our email addresses or leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think about these issues? In the meantime, be strong, be courageous, and be the voice of Joshua and Caleb in your generation. I believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob.